what is going on everybody so I have noticed a lot of students having issues with uh, the mount point in Docker uh, definitely a sticking point there are plenty of tips and things to try in uh, in the FAQ but if you want to get going uh, you can use volumes instead of uh, the mount points and this will just be a quick run through of how to do that uh, so first we're going to want to make sure that all of our containers are stopped and removed I mean you don't really have to it's just my preference to start with a clean slate so all that's saying is a I don't have any containers running or stopped and then I'm just gonna do the same thing for images and then volumes and I'll put these in the descriptions of the video. Ooh, I did have a lot of images still on here. And that's just for me testing it. So I can go to uh, Data Talks Club, Data Engineering. And I'll just grab that file. I'm just going to call this uh, demo vol for dem demonstration volumes. And we can just CD into that. And we'll go ahead and grab the Docker Compose file real quick. And one thing that is not in here that might be helpful is uh, the PG admin data. Okay, so we see that's at var lib PG admin. So. We'll switch back to here and we're just going to make a docker compose file and we'll paste the contents there. Uh, the difference between a docker volume and a bind mount is really we just need to uh, give it the name right off the bat here and we can call this postgres data rid of the quotes uh, just to keep everything similar here we'll put our volumes here and we'll call this PG admin data Arr. Just copy this part and we'll also want to put this at the end I'll say volumes and let's see we have Postgres data want a colon at the end and PG admin that looks good so I'm just going to save that and run it detached and bring it up and just as a nice little trick I like to do uh, you can run watch on docker so you see it's still pulling the images but then we can just every two seconds it's going to run this command and give us the output here and we'll give that just a few moments and if we go back here we can just double check the 
usernames, passwords. Uh, in the Docker network, the services are going to be advertised by these names. Uh, that's really convenient because we can then just uh, use that to connect. So PG admin should be coming up on localhost 8080. Looks like it's still pulling the images. And that's moving a bit slow. So we'll give that just another minute or two here. And I don't need that tab. But again, I would recommend going through the FAQ, uh, trying quotes, you know, maybe if you're on Windows, the full file path here uh, with a whack in front of it, you know, one of these guys. Um, I know a lot of people have run into issues with it, but they've been able to eventually get that by playing around with that uh, with that mount. Also. Something you run into is permissions on this directory. Uh, chmod777 I think solves that. Uh, if you're doing the PG admin data, I uh, think you ch own uh, 5050. Uh, if you Google around on that, uh, there are ways to get that bind mount to work. Uh, but again, Uh, let's see, what did I do wrong here? Let's bring that down. And we'll go back to the Docker Compose file. Oh, double colon. Fat fingers moving too quick. All right, let's try that again. Should be faster now that the images are downloaded locally. And let's go to localhost 8080. admin at admin.com I believe it's root don't need to save that and we'll just register our Postgres server is that still on my clipboard yes and we'll just put that in there username is root not the maintenance database I make that mistake plenty of times Go ahead then and expand this out. We see our New York taxi. And we can go down and we'll just make a table. Actually, we'll do this in the query tool because it's a little bit easier. And just create table, just call it test. Um, one column, full name, uh, make that a variable character, 80 length, and semicolon, we'll run that. All right, so now we can bring it down. And let's see, let's go ahead and wipe out the containers. I won't do the images because, as you saw, that does take a moment to come back up. And actually, I think because I ran that with the dash D flag, it removed the containers once it was done. Okay, and it is down, and we see our containers are gone. So, 
I will go ahead and uh, bring that back up. And that should just take another moment. I think it'll prompt us for the password the first time going back in. Uh, but after that, we should be good. Guess I could have let Firefox remember this. That is a little bit odd. And that should have persisted that data. We see test is still there. Uh, the PG admin data. Oh, did I not copy? Ha. Huh. Oh, fat fingers all day today. So I don't have the N uh, at the end of that. So let's go ahead and bring that down again. Let's give this another shot. And because we were not persisting the data in the correct location, I probably need to enter all that info again. Yes, so register server. If you notice here that the Postgres data is persisting because I actually put uh, the right location in there, it's just the PG admin data. That's why we're having to reconnect the server or reconnect to the server. So we still see our test table and bring this down one more time. And we can uh, just verify that no containers are running or stopped. Uh, they don't exist. They've been removed. And then we'll bring it back up. And a little bit of a delay. All right. Maybe 
maybe I should just save the credentials in here, but oh well. All right, now at least it's prompting us for a password, and we can save it now. Expand that out. And we still have our test table. Now, one more time around the horn. We'll go ahead and bring that down. And bring it up one more time. Now, this time, it should not prompt us for the password. And we should still see our test table in there. All right, no password prompt. Our table is still there. So hopefully this gets some of you past the sticking point of the bind mount again. Uh, I would check the FAQ, uh, work through it. Part of the, the fun and the times you learn the best are when you, you really hit those uh, sticky situations and work through them yourselves or ask others for help. And it really is worth your while to uh, get kind of the problem solving mindset and uh, get that in your tool belt definitely pays off in the long run but hopefully this helps some of you out and gets you going all right